Now, when you think about it, GRDC is all about partnerships from those that make up the regional panels to cooperative R&D projects involving farmer groups and state government departments, such as a new project on managing climate and seasonal variability. That project will be outlined for us in a couple of minutes. But first, let's meet a Victorian grain grower who's turned seasonal variability to his own advantage. This is David Johinki, a cereal grower from Victoria's Wimmera district. Our loss from the, the wet weather could have been anywhere up to uh, half a million dollars in the end, um, depending on which where you take the spot price for the day. But yeah, a lot of people went from having a bumper year back to an average year in one fowl, well, well, within a couple of weeks. Like many growers in the eastern states, the finish to David's 2010 season was a wet one, which he considers ironic given Murrawarra is Aboriginal for place of no water. We had an excellent finish to the season as far as the crops were looking fantastic and we were actually looking at a very, very handy, handy end of the season for once. Um, however, we sort of got halfway through the crop, uh, through harvest itself. Um, the rains opened up and uh, we basically got kept out of the paddock for three to four weeks. When we finally did get back into there, most of the quality had disappeared and uh, a fair bit of the quantity did too, so look, we could have lost anywhere between a quarter to a third of the crop. On the upside, the unseasonal weather left him with a full soil moisture profile and a real opportunity. So he decided to grow a summer crop. While the choice of sunflower was left to field, having disappeared from crop rotations in the Wimmera a generation ago, it was nonetheless an opportunity. Yeah, you couldn't ask for a better, better sowing conditions. We, it rained practically straight after we finished sowing in uh, mid-January and they came out, bounced out of the ground with a bit of soil temperature and looked really good from the start. For his first crack at an oilseed crop, David was happy with the result and the experience gained. It actually finished not too bad, all considering. We didn't have a lot of temperature to help the seeds mature and it took a long time for it to ripen. So in theory, um, I'd have liked to have this crop well and truly off the stalk by now. But uh, considering the weather we've had and so on and so forth, we've, we've done all right. It's not just the weather that's against him. Sorry, the guys are here for the tyre. Can I just um, shoot yeah. over here and let them know yeah, what's no, going? Go for it. Sure yeah. thing. Thank you. The tyre on the harvester needs replacing. And let's not talk about the mice problem. What David Jahinke's opportunity crop demonstrated was an ability to adapt to seasonal variability. And that, in essence, is what the National Adaptation and Mitigation Initiative, NAMI, will do. It involves a range of a number of, of um, program partners. We've got state agencies and we've got um, a number of farming systems groups. In fact, 10 farming systems groups. And that's where our own mini climate change forced us to head inside. GRDC manages the initiative and together with DAF funds the program. And the partnership between the Birchip Cropping Group, Deedee in Queensland, Primary Industries Victoria and WA's Department of Agriculture will provide practical answers and demonstrations, plus modelling to project future outcomes. If we were to snap our fingers, for example, and just introduce uh, an increase in temperature of, of um, one and a half degrees and an increase in CO2 levels of 150 uh, parts a million, that they're the sorts of changes that we might expect by, say, 2050. And the long-term average suggests that it our wheat yields might be a little lower than they are now. Um, but with technology changes and with good management, um, when you think through how we might modify our practice, um, I, I expect that the impact won't be as, as uh, uh, significant financially, and I think we can adapt our system to, to cope with that. The National Adaption and Mitigation Initiative will involve grower-driven demonstration sites in 24 locations across Australia. So some of the projects are looking at um, ways of, of maximising that water use by minimising evaporation and, and, uh, and maximising um, transpiration uh, water use efficiency essentially. So, so that applies to all crops, not just cereals. Some of, uh, some of the programs will be looking at that um, profitability analysis of, of, um, of production and its impact on, on financial performance of farms in the future. Adaption to climate change and the mitigation of greenhouse emissions has been identified as a key driver for change in the grains industry for 2012 and beyond, according to the GRDC. And the specific objectives of the initiative 
are to directly involve farmers and advisors in designing on-ground demonstrations of locally relevant adapters to climate change to maintain and enhance farm viability, assist rapid dissemination of information about adapting to and mitigating climate change, assess the greenhouse gas emission implications of different farming practices, demonstrate practices which could reduce net greenhouse gas emissions from nitrous oxide and methane, as well as increase soil carbon sequestration, and increase awareness and knowledge in the grains industry of the viability of greenhouse gas emission strategies and demonstrate how to put them into practice. So that, that information will be fed back into the JRDC, fed back into DAF, and uh, fed back into the policy makers that, that, um, that um, will develop future programs. Meanwhile, back on the farm, the tyre has been replaced and David Jahinke can reflect on climate change as he takes off the last of his sunflowers. Well, I've been home for about 15 years and uh, I can tell you now, my rainfall average isn't the same as my grandpa's rainfall average. We've been well down. Uh, but from that, we've had to try different techniques um, of farm systems as well as looking at different crops to try to uh, alleviate either the, the dry finishes or just the, the starting moisture we've got in the soils. He's right, a lot has changed on the land in the past couple of generations and there's more change to come. But with initiatives such as the National Adaptation and Mitigation Initiative, that change is designed to be for the better.